Hello class, uh, today we're going to learn, uh, well let's go over the agenda, we're going to do the warm up, explicit functions for geometric sequences and the homework is 9.2. You will be able or students will be able to write explicit functions for geometric functions. Uh, this is a warm up and pause it, pause the video so that you can work on it for a couple of minutes. Okay, so it says find the explicit function. And remember we learned this yesterday, this was um, arithmetic sequences, okay? Means that I'm adding each time. And so what am I adding in here? On the first one, I'm adding three. Okay, every time I'm adding three plus three plus three. Okay, so for the explicit function, we're gonna write f of n is equals to always the value, the first value, the initial point. So it's gonna be four. And we're going to add the base, which is plus three and we multiply that always by n minus one. Remember that this represents the number of days or number of the position, like position one, two, three, four, five, minus one because in the first one, we don't have that plus three, right? It's what we start with, but then it doesn't include that. So this is my explicit function for this sequence, arithmetic sequence. The next one, what are we doing? We're subtracting four. We're subtracting four. From here to here, we're subtracting four. So, my explicit function, my explicit function is f of n, is equals to, again, the first number, which is 31. Instead of adding three, I'm subtracting four and multiply by the number of times we do that, okay? Again, we're subtracting one because for the first one, it's just 31, is what we start with. It doesn't get affected until the second one, so we don't include that one in there. That's why we subtract by three. Okay, for the lesson today, we're going to write explicit functions for geometric functions. And what is a geometric function? So geometric sequences um, are sequences that result from multiplying by a fraction, a negative number, or a whole number. So before, we were adding and subtracting Okay, those are arithmetic sequences. Now we are multiplying by a fraction, a negative, or a whole number. And those are called geometric sequences. Okay? So we have this sequence, 5, 15, 45, 135, 405, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What am I doing each time? How is it? Well, we can see that it's increasing. Are we adding the same amount? No. We can see that what we're doing is multiplying by 3. And here again, we're multiplying by 3. We're multiplying by 3 multiplying by three. So my explicit formula is gonna be f of n is equals to same, same thing, we're going to have the initial point, but what are we doing to that initial point? We're multiplying by three, and again, this is gonna be 
to the power of n minus 1. Okay, that's the difference. We're in here, we're multiplying, we're not adding or subtracting anymore. And the n minus 1 is going to be a power, it's going to be an exponent. Okay, and that's for geometric sequences. Again, how do we formulate this? This is the first point. This is the pattern that we're doing, right? Initial point. This is the pattern. And this is always n minus one because we're going back to the, I mean, we're going the number of days or the number of steps minus one because in the one is not, it doesn't get affected by times three, okay? Okay, another example. If we have the sequence 1, negative 4, 16, negative 64, 256, what is happening in here? From 1 to 4, from 4 to 16, but I noticed that in here is a, a negative, a positive, a negative, a positive. When we have a negative, a positive, a negative, a positive, oh, the, uh, sorry. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. That means that we're multiplying by a negative number. Why? Because by multiplying by negative, and in here we can see that it's by four, positive times negative, negative. One times four, four. Again, we multiply by negative four. Negative times negative is positive, and positive times positive is 16. Again, we multiply by negative 4, and we say positive times negative, negative. 16 times 4, 64. And again, times negative 4, negative times negative is positive, and 64 times 4 is 256. Okay? So, again, for my functions, again, these are the, the important values that we need. So it's f of n equals 1 times, because it's a geometric sequence, times negative 4 to the, remember what goes in here? n minus 1. Okay, because we're, we're talking about the place minus the first one that doesn't get affected by that times four. Okay, it's until the second day or the second step that we get that result times four, times negative four, times negative four. Okay. Let's do one more. And so, 32, 8, 2, 0 0.5, uh oh, 0 0.125. What is happening in here? Well, for one thing, it's going down. But what did I do? 32 to get 8, and then from A to 2, what did I do to get 2? Oh, okay, it's, we divided by 4. Dividing by 4 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 fourth, okay? Multiplying by 1 fourth, why? Because if you multiply the 32, we put it over 1, 32 times 1 is 32, and 1 times 4 is 4, so we end up dividing 32 by 4, which is 8. Same here. When we multiply 8 times 1 fourth, we get 2. When we multiply 2 times 1 fourth, we get 0.5. 
And when we multiply that times one fourth, 0.5 times one fourth is 0.125, okay? Again, the values to write my function is the initial point. So f of n is gonna be my initial point times the pattern in here, which is one fourth, right? I'm multiplying by one fourth and n minus one. Okay, this is my initial point. This is my repeated, the pattern that is happening and then n minus one as a power. Sometimes they're gonna give you the function and you will find the sequence. And I'm gonna show you with the table and also just a shortcut, okay? So what if I have f of n is equals to two times negative five to the n minus one? If I wanna do a table, This is n, this is f of n, meaning the result. So n would be one, two, three, four, and five. Let's do just the first five. So this means that I'm gonna replace the one in here. So let me see, let me move it a little bit up. So I'm gonna replace f of one is equal to two times negative five to the n, which is one, minus one. This means that I'm gonna multiply two times negative five to the power of one minus one is zero. Remember, now anything to the power of zero is equals to one. And so two times one is two. So I'm gonna put the value in here, two. Now let's do it for two. F of two is equals to the initial point, two, times negative five to the power of n minus one. n is two minus one. So this is equals to two times negative five to the two. Take away one, one. And remember that anything to the power of one is just that same number, okay? So it's negative five. And two times negative five, negative 10. So my second value is negative 10. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more. So let's see, can you see that? Yes. So f of three, is equals to two times negative five, right? Two times negative five to the n, in this case n is three minus one. So two times negative five to the three minus one, two. Here I'm gonna do this on the side. Negative five to the second power means negative five times negative five Remember, negative times negative is positive, and five times five is 25. So it's gonna be two times 25, and two times 25 equals 50. That's my third value. Now, I'm gonna do one more, but then I'm gonna show you, for the last one, I can just do the pattern. I'm gonna look for f of four is equals to two times negative five to the, n is four minus one, so that's two times negative five to the third power, which is two times, again, negative five times negative five times negative five. This negative times negative is positive, five times five is 25 times this third one, so positive times negative is negative, and five times 25 is 125. Okay, so negative 125. 
and 2 times negative 125. I always multiply the signs first, so positive times negative is negative, and 2 times 125 is just twice as much that, so 250, okay? So what am I doing here? Well, this is always my initial point. I can just, instead of doing all this work, I could just put the initial point right there. And this tells me what to do each time. I'm just gonna multiply times negative five, times negative five, times negative five. This explicit formula will be helpful if I want to find the value of that 100th space, okay? The 1,259th space, okay? So, Let's see. What I'm doing here is multiplying by negative 5. So 2 times negative 5, negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 5, negative times negative is positive. 10 times 5 is 50. Again, positive 50 times negative 5, positive times negative is, oops. I forgot to copy that. <laughs> okay, there you go. Negative times positive is negative, and 50 times five is 225, 250. And once again, I can figure out this one without doing all this work. Negative times negative is positive, and five times 250 is gonna be 1,250. Okay, so you can just do it directly. You can just do the sequence without having to do these steps if you know that this is the first number and that you're multiplying to get the next five by negative five. Okay, you just have to be very careful with the signs. Just like I, I made a mistake in there, you could probably do that too. Okay, one more. We have f of n is equals to 200 times 2 fifths to the n minus one. So I know for sure if I wanna do the short way that my first number is 200, that my next number, we're just gonna multiply by two and divide by, by five, or we can just represent this as a decimal, which is Two divided by five is 0.4. You can go and, and figure that out in your calculator. You will see that it's 0.4. So every time I'm just multiplying by 0.4. And so 200 times 0.4 is equals to 80. 80 times 0.4 is equals to 32. 32 times 0.4 is equals to 12.8. And 12.8 times 0.4 is equals to 5.12. Again, you can use your calculator to figure this out. And it will continue like that forever. Again, if you want to do it the long way, that's fine. I'm going to do two of them so that you can, you can see how that's done. Um, let me show you. Let's see. If it shows so in the calculator to figure out this amount I just put 2 divided by 5.4 so that's what I'm using okay that's the the value that I'm using instead of 2 fifths okay so if we want to do it step by step, one, two, three, four, five. This is n, this is f of n. So for the first one, I'm going to start here. f of, f of one is equals to the initial point, which is 200, times, I'm just going to replace it with the 0.4 to the n, but n is one minus one, which is 200 times 0.4 to the one, take away one is zero, 
And we remember that anything to the power of zero is equals to one. And so 200 times one is 200. So that's my first value here. For the next one, I'm gonna do f of two is equals to 200 times 0.4 to the, again, two minus one which is 200 times 0.4 to the, two minus one is one. And so 200 times 0.4, anything to the power of one is the same number. Okay, so I can show you here. Can you see it? Yes, it's 200 times 0.4 equals 80. So that's my second answer, this value right here. And again, f of three is gonna be 200 times 0.4 to the, again, n minus one, but n is three minus one. So it's gonna be 200 times four, I mean times 0.4 to the second power. Three minus one is two, and so it's 200 times. Now I'm gonna raise this, you can, sorry about that. <laughs> um, you can just multiply directly everything. So 200 times 0.4 to the power, remember that this might be a little arrow facing up, or it can be the y to the x or x to the y and second power equals 32. Okay, point, whoops. So I, I would just put the answer in here if you do it directly, the whole thing with the calculator. So the answer is 32. So for the third space, the answer is 32. Um, you can continue like that. And you can find it this way or you can just see the pattern. This is my first number. I multiply that number by whatever comes out from the fraction and get the second number, multiply it again, multiply it again, multiply it by that again, or you can do step by step, okay? Thank you so much. I hope this video helps you.